Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about the triangle inequality theorem. So let's get started. First, it says here that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the length of the third side. So here's the story with triangles, and this is true for every single triangle. If you take any two sides and you add them up, that length needs to be greater than the third side. And I'm gonna grab just a couple pencils of mine here. And just to kind of show you as an example, these pencils are not super, super perfect, but let's say I had these three pencils and they're all a length of one. Well, if I put them together, I can obviously definitely make a triangle, right? Because if I take two of these sides, one plus one, it's two. And two is definitely greater than the third side, which is just a one. But what would happen if I took this and I had a side length of one, one, okay? Two sides of one, but then my other length was two. And I put two sides together. Could a length of one, one, and two make a triangle? The answer is actually going to be no. Um, so if I show you this, and I take two triangle, two sides of one and I put them together. And then I take my third side and I go to match that up with the ends. I lost my pencil here. Then I'm gonna see, okay, well, those points match up, but the only way to get those points to match up completely is if they were actually straight and flat. It's like the two sides of a triangle have to then cave in and become completely flat with the third side because one plus one is two. So if I have a length of two and I have a side of one and one, you're gonna see that this is an impossible triangle to make. You cannot have a triangle with sides one, one, and two because the one and one would have to be flat and you end up having just a straight line. So any two sides must have a sum that's greater than the third. So this is just a really generic um, formula here that I'm showing you. So AB plus BC has to be greater than CA, the third side. So the sum of the two blue sides has to be greater than the yellow side. But then it's true the whole way around the triangle. So BC plus CA has to be greater than AB. CA plus AB has to obviously be greater than BC. So it's what, just whatever the remaining side would be. So now if I asked you to determine whether the lengths could given could be the sides of a triangle, prove why that is true with one inequality, you're basically kind of looking for adding up the two smaller sides. And as long as the sum of the two smallest sides is greater than the third side, then you know it's going to be a triangle. If the sum of the two smaller sides is equal to the third side, definitely not a triangle. And if the sum of the two smaller sides is less than the third side, then definitely not a triangle. There's no way it would work. So here, if I add up the sum of the two smaller sides, it's definitely greater than 12, which means, yes, this is definitely a triangle. If I add up the two smaller sides of this triangle, one plus two, it's definitely not greater than three. It's actually equal to three. Those could not be the sides of a triangle. And think about it. If you have a side of one and a side of two, the third side's a length of three, you'd have to flatten the sides of one and two to just match up with the three, and then you have a straight line. 4, 5, 10. 4 plus 5 is definitely not greater than 10. It's less than, so that is no. Now here, make sure, again, you add up the smaller sides. That's how you check. So 14 plus 11 is definitely greater than 15. So those could be the three sides of a triangle. 5 plus 7 is definitely not greater than 14. So that is definitely not the three sides of a triangle. 8 plus 9 is definitely greater than 10. So yes. 2 plus 3 is definitely not greater than 15. So that is no. And four plus four is definitely not greater than eight, so that is no. So you have these cases where as long as the two smaller sides add up to be a value that's greater than the third side, then you definitely have a triangle. So now, determining side range. So this says to determine the range of values of the third side of a triangle, you're going to basically set up two inequalities. So if I gave you this triangle here, x, four, and nine, what I know for a fact is that x plus 4, these two sides here, definitely need to be greater than 9, right? Because any two sides of a triangle, if I add them up, should be greater than the third. So 4, I'm going to refer to as the smaller side of the two, 4 and 9. Obviously, I don't know what x is. But if I go to solve this, I know that x, this value x, 
definitely needs to be some side that's greater than five, right? So if it's six, it would be good because four plus six is 10. 10 is definitely greater than nine. Uh, X could be 11, and this is also good because then four plus nine is um, 13, and 13 is definitely greater than 11. So X could be some number greater than five. But what I also need to know is that this number here has to be in relation to my other two sides. So whatever four plus nine is, that needs to be a number that's definitely greater than whatever X is. So that's my second inequality that I need to set up. So those two given sides need to be greater than X, which ends up being four plus nine is 13. And so 13 has to be greater than X, which also means X is less than 13. Now remember your compound inequalities from algebra one. If I wanted to put these two, these two separate unique inequalities into one compound inequality. Now to make the compound inequality out of these two unique inequalities, x is greater than five and 13 is greater than x, remember we always start with our smaller value. So x is greater than five, we are going to reverse that statement and instead of saying x is greater than five, we're going to say five is less than x. And then we're going to use that x and attach it onto our second statement. So x is greater than five becomes five is less than x. And now instead of saying 13 is greater than x, we would say x is less than 13. And this inequality here now shows us all the range of values. So all the numbers that are greater than five and have to be less than 13. So think about it, six would work. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, but not 13. But of course, all the decimal values, right? So 5.1, 5.2, 12.9, anything that's in that range could be a possible value for x. Now, setting up these inequalities you saw was actually pretty straightforward and simple, but I also want you to make some um, inferences about, you know, where does 5 and 13 come from? Look at the numbers we were given, 9 and 4. Well, where do you think the 5 actually came from? It just simply came from 9 minus 4. So the difference of these two numbers is actually your lower boundary. And then look at 13, came from me adding the two numbers together. Nine plus th four is 13, is my upper boundary. So any numbers in between five and 13 are going to be part of my range. I'm always gonna be using the less than symbol to represent the less than or the greater than with the inequality that is in the reverse order, solely because I could never have equal to, because if it's equal to, then it could be equal to, the two sides could be equal to the third side, and we definitely can't have that be the case. So that actually means now, if I said to you determine the range of values for the third side of the triangle with these two given sides, we know that the lower boundary is the difference between the two numbers. So this one would be two. So two is less than X. And then my upper boundary, my maximum would be the sum. So two is less than X, which is less than 18. So any number in between here would give me a true statement. Three is a number here that would give me a true statement. Eight plus three is 11, which is greater than 10. 17 would also be a true statement because look, eight plus 10 is 18 and 18 is greater than 17 and all the numbers in between. So let's use that pattern to continue the rest. So if I give you sides of one and two, the range of the third side could be anywhere from one is less than X, which is less than three which really only gives you two and the integers, uh, I'm sorry, the decimal values before one and up to three. I'm sorry, after one and up to three. Four and five, so that would be one is less than X, which is less than nine. 14 and 15 would be one is less than X is less than 29. Five and 14 would be nine is less than X is less than 19. Eight and nine, one is less than X is less than 17. Two and three, one is less than X is less than five, and four and four, zero is less than X is less than eight. Awesome. So now this last screen that I have for you is kind of a challenge screen. Um, I do strongly suggest you take a moment to pause this screen, set up this chart, and see what you can come up with. So here it says, using only the side lengths of one, two, three, and four, Okay, so that those are your only four possible lengths that you can make of a triangle. Create as many triangles as you can. So you're gonna set up three columns. Side, I'm sorry, four columns. Side one, side two, side three, and a proof. Now, if I give you those lengths, and you can repeat the lengths, 
you're going to try to make up as many triangles as you can. Now we know for a fact, like one, two, three can't be a triangle, right? Because one plus two is equal to three. One, two, four could not be a triangle because one plus two is not greater than four. But here's how you're going to set this up. So if I say the most basic triangle is a sides all of one, I could make a triangle of one, 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 and my proof is that one plus one is greater than one. If I add up the two smaller sides, it's greater than the third side, which happen to all be the same length anyway. I'm going to show you the next one just as a, um, a helpful hint. If I have a side of one, a side of two, and a side three of two, one, two, two would also work because one plus two is definitely greater than two. So one, two, two is definitely going to be a triangle. So I'm not going to tell you how many there are. I'm going to ask you to pause right now and see if you can fill in as much as you can and then press play when you are ready. So hopefully you're pressing play right now because you did take some time to test them out. So I'm going to drag away right now and show you all of the options of triangles. Um, I filled in this chart pretty methodically with the numbers increasing in a specific order. Um, the order of your sides doesn't matter as long as you have a two, three, three. But let's say you wrote it down as three, two, three. Just know that obviously that means the same thing. Um, but I believe I came up with 13 different possibilities. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's 13 possible triangles you could create using the sides one through four. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.